the Jamaican media barred from any further interviews, any further photo capturing, or any further insights on what's going on. Just like on YouTube, figure you bring some new food. Hello people, and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time on the channel, a special welcome to you. I ask that you check out the rest of my videos. If you like what you see, give them a thumbs up, leave a comment, but more than anything, I'm asking that you subscribe to the channel. Today's video is titled Jamaica Freedom of the Press because I believe it was only like a month ago Jamaica was bragging about being sixth place on a ranking of freedom of the press worldwide. Apparently Jamaica had fell to uh, I believe seventh place or eighth place but uh, I don't know but what I do know is that Jamaica regained sixth place on the world ranking of countries with the best freedom of the press but that seemed to have been a hoax because it was only yesterday that I covered an issue where the Jamaicans that were stranded overseas are now being allowed to return to Jamaica. I got that information obviously through the Jamaican media, through the Jamaican press. I'm talking about mainstream media and social media. Okay, social media is not official, but the mainstream media like The Observer, The Star, The Gleaner, CVM, TVJ, those are the official mainstream media in Jamaica. Uh, and that's where I actually got the information. It seemed as if because an alleged diplomat was exposed and questioned as to the exceptional um, treatment that that person was given in Jamaica, it seemed like the Jamaican government, currently the Jamaican Labour Party, did not like that. That's the conclusion I'm coming to because only a few days later after that story was heard and everyone was questioning why is this individual getting exceptional treatment in respect to the other returnees what i woke up to learn yesterday was that the jamaican media were barred from any further interviews any further photo capturing or any further insight on what's going on in Jamaica at the airport in particular with the exception of the Jamaica Information Service that in itself is laughable why the Jamaica Information Service the JIS that is government owned and government run so come on now come on now Andrew Olness do better than that show your people a little bit more respect show them a little bit more respect of course a whole lot of laws have been broken but because of the pandemic by the time all these media houses take this to court the government is going to conjure some new legislation law and says well because of the pandemic we have to put new protocols in place and it could drag out for another two to four to five years the government knows that so it's a waste of time for the media houses to even take this to court it is tricks in trade as we say in jamaica and material in business but after hearing this news obviously i was not happy about it i just i saw it like a dictatorship i saw these are things that happen in countries around the world in history that has ran by dictator the media if you can shut down the media or control the media then that, that, that's just control that's not freedom of the people and that is not freedom of the press so I deliberately titled this one freedom of the press look at it I spelt it as the press I'm not trying to chat pathway here so don't think for a second that I meant freedom of the press I meant freedom of the press meaning something is being suppressed it's being stifled it's been on air and I did not respect that from Andrew Olness administration but the more things change the more things remain the same because these are things and behavior that would have taken place in the 1980s um, keep the people in the dark keep them dumb keep them blind so we can do whatever we want to do with the country and when I say we I'm not even talking about the reigning parties when I was a child I used to believe that 
the suppression and the depression that the ghettos or the Jamaican citizens felt. I used to think that was just being done by greedy politicians that just want to fatten their own pockets. But as I got older and understand politics a lot more, I get to understand that it's outside influence that have the Jamaican government like this, puppets on a string, and dictate how the Jamaican government should actually treat its people. So in other words, I'm pretty much saying this right here, where the Jamaican media were denied access to the airport, my honest belief, this is my opinion, and I'm free to have my own opinion, that right there was instigated and instrumented by outside forces. And Jamaican, I understand, we're not a rich country, even though we have resources to be rich. We have natural resources in Jamaica to be rich. Of course, we don't have oil and we don't have gold, but look closer at Jamaica. We have what it takes to be independent, but we're so used to leaning and the big dogs for so long, and we're in debt to this person and in debt to that person. So we just find complacent in being the little man, the beggar, the borrower, and as long as we stay in that position, as long as we refuse to what we say in Jamaica, ban our belly and do it on our own, as long as we refuse to do that, we will forever not be independent in our action and in our decision for our country and for the future of the Jamaican citizens. So with this new action in reference to the Jamaica press and the Jamaican government, we have to take ourselves off that. I was about to say take ourselves off that list, but who who make these lists? Who who rank these country? Because personally, I was surprised to hear that Jamaica was ranked sixth place. Because when I heard that Jamaica ranked sixth place, I said, wow, that is like super excellent. Why? Because I'm considering over, a nine, over 190 other countries and I'm thinking, Jamaica? sixth place i could name you 10 countries off the top of my head that i know personally have freedom of the press exercise without any interruption without any interference and those 10 countries would not include jamaica so when i thought jamaica sixth place i don't believe that because it was only a few months before that that it was said pictures by journalists or by anybody that were taken or any unofficial report that were taken at courthouses or near courthouses the individual could be fined up to a million dollars in jamaica i'm talking about jamaica dollars but it's still decent amount of money so pretty much journalists and individuals with their phone camera and so on you can't take no pictures anymore so does that say freedom of the press to you? Because to me, it doesn't say freedom of the press. Anyway, I'm not even gonna drag this one on today because I just wanted to highlight this annoyance to me when it comes to denying the Jamaican people, whether it's an individual of Jamaican nationality or it is an institution in Jamaica that is run by Jamaican citizen that being violated, or denied of its rights in the country, I will always have something to say in criticism of it because my aim is to see Jamaica and its people have the same freedom in life like most other countries that are branded as first world. So people, yesterday I already covered Kamina Johnson who is the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Let me see who, who, who should be under the gun for this one. So that should be the Minister of Security and the Minister of Information. Um, this is on Jamaican soil, so it has very little to do with Kamina Johnson-Smith, even though I did see an image of her in the paper. Anyway, people, let me hear what you think about the Jamaican government denying the media houses in Jamaica from continuing any coverage of the returning residents to Jamaica. To Jamaica because to me that sounds very suspicious if you're gonna deny cameras if you're gonna deny the Avenue and the voices that speak to the nation that the Jamaican people rely on to know what's going on if you're gonna deny them of any access you have something to hide 
Let me know if you agree with that, people, because you know on this channel, I accept thumbs up and thumbs down. Agreement and disagreement, because at the end of the day, each one teach one. You've reached the end of my video, and that in itself is a support that I truly appreciate. And while I'm at it, I will take this time out to let you guys know other ways that you can support my channel. The first and simplest way that you can support my channel is by giving this video a thumbs up. And the second and most important way that you can support this channel is by hitting that subscribe button and subscribe to my channel and follow me through my YouTube journey. Other ways that you can support my channel is by going to my Teespring online store and buying some of my merch and another way that you guys can also support this channel is by joining me in patreon to give me a contribution to support what I do on YouTube and what I do to entertain you guys once again I want to thank you guys for your continuous support and ask that you join me, Ian T. Sebast, on YouTube and see where my journey takes me. Until next time, people. Peace.